Good morning, good afternoon. Note today is a holiday. I do want to do a little bit of hobby work today, so I also, looks like I forgot to check in some code. this wonderful macro that I had made. So let's check that in. Right, I had made one macro for the UVs, but then I had made another macro for the geometry, right? Right. Mit message. Use macro for model geometry. Okay, send that. Okay. Checking to see if I have any to do's in the code. Backend integration stuff is a note, not a to do. So let's see. Model type. Sort of buried in the middle of this code. It's model set. Are you using model set? I guess I am, right? Right, model set, and I'm using instant set with a handle. Okay. Wonder if I should have a model handle, which is model type here. That way, if in the future I separate it out. For some reason, then no, no model type really does uh, go with that. Unless, like, I had a dynamic model type. Oh, how, how many places do I use model type in? Use it. So an instance knows what type it is. You look it up from the instance. Uh, we store it in the batch. In the list of things we choose from for new cubes. Great models, we have to list them. Okay, that looks good. Yeah, okay. I'm just thinking that these UV coordinates and the cube geometry maybe doesn't really belong with models. It belongs in a another file under models. Where do we use this from? Use it in the app. Hmm. 
Would you say that you prefer Rust over C++? Tired Beaver, I feel like you've asked, asked me that question before. Have you? I know I've been asked that multiple times. But, hello. Someone's asked me that. Uh, yes, the answer would be yes. I prefer Rust over C++. I need to have an ant. That reminds me, I needed to have a, a command ready for why Rust. So thank you for reminding me that. Add com why Rust. Um, remove for furs Rust. For a few different reasons. Hey there, Gadam. Even though I moved to Rust, you're still here. Just remember, Rust is like C++ in many ways. So you can just think of it as a different dialect of C++. Right? <laughs> for different reasons. For a few diff... Well, why type it here when I could type it where you guys can see? Different reasons. Rambo doesn't prefer not being good at his keyboard, but that's okay. Uh, the compiler is a lot more. Uh, can we turn on auto wrap? I'll go word wrap. There we go. This is a lot more strict. Uh, guiding you towards uh, better code designs. Two. Oh, uh, once once you get a Rust program to compile, more often than not, it just works. I guess uh, to go along with that, I can say, and uh, rarely do you need to use a debugger. With C++, I need to use a debugger all the time to like figure out what's going on. With Rust, I think it's a combination of um, just the better design you get forced into, and Well, that's really the root of it. Yeah, more checking is done earlier. Let's just say that. Now we can do the uh, Y rust. Okay, I like that. That that sort of sums it up for me. Thoughts on compile times? Don't care. Makes me um, if it's a little bit if it takes me a little bit longer, like uh, thirty seconds instead of twenty seconds, or thirty seconds instead of ten seconds. It just lets me kind of sit a little bit longer and contemplate by doing the right thing. What I'm going to do next? I've never really had to wait too long on compile. The compiler versus the guy she tells you not to worry about. <laughs> okay. I was looking at this module models thinking a lot of the stuff at the top, um, this is the app. A lot of the stuff at the top of this mod of this module, maybe I need to move. So in model itself, does it really care much about the type of vertex texture attributes? It doesn't, right? By the time it here, it's just a buffer. It 
comes in as vertex attributes though. But actually we bite mock cast it right away. I'm wondering if maybe I should move this out. Because model doesn't really care the type of the vertex attributes. Its only responsibility is to hold buffers, line groups and this and the like. Right? You show how to do the word wrap and VS code, please? Sure, it's um I can hit my hit the right keys here. What am I doing? What am I doing? I'm hitting Command Shift P to get the palette here. Um, it's toggle word wrap. View toggle word wrap. Yeah, that's what I did. There are a few other commands like rewrap comment. Um, and then Emmet and Rewrap have some other things, but yeah, view the view one is what you're probably looking for. So you don't have to keep scrolling. Okay, what is this model concerned about? Why do we have a num instances? Oh, because of the per instance buffer needs to be sized large enough, right? Yeah, this one right here. We do need to know the size of the uniforms type. But that transform is only really used by the renderer. Hmm. I'm just trying to have a good separation of concerns between the model and its renderer. This is the only place where we need to know the size of it, where we need to know the type, and we only need to know the type to compute the size of it. I suppose that's okay, but maybe this moves down into the renderer. We have ever used the model type function? Use it here. Why do we use it there? Oh, and we're filling the batch. Yeah. And that's important. We can't draw two different models together. Okay. Maybe I can get rid of this draw order. I think I'm going to keep it because if I ever do like work with things that are tra tr like not that are semi-transparent, then you we do want to order them by distance from the camera, right? And then draw them in the right order. <clears throat> yeah, we'll leave it. And why is the is the rigid body here? Oh right, we get back to that right. Um, from here, why does the renderer need it? Oh, because uh, that's where we store rotation and, and position. Let's translate is here. Translation and rotation stored in the rigid body. But that's not really the, the renderer doesn't really need to know that, right? Shouldn't that be like abstracted away a little bit? If it's only used to get these things out, it 
maybe what I really should do is have a method that just returns those two things. It would make this a little bit, it, yeah, it would help here, wouldn't it? Am I okay with a tuple? I think I, mm. I don't think I am. Uh, let's make an... Doesn't really matter too much. Maybe what I should do is make that decision later and for now put a comment here. Note. This might uh, be uh, better encapsulated. What's up with this keyword today? Is it just humid or something? <laughs> In the model type. Or the model instance type. There, I left myself a note. Control shift P and then wrap. For setting some reason it didn't wrap the text over 80 columns. Um, it also has to do with uh, your settings, so. I think you also have to have um, the settings set to wrap at, at the right point. I, it, I, it's probably not rulers. Maybe it's a default. I don't think it's rulers. Probably a default, right? Yeah, here it is. So you probably need to change this. Your editor word wrap column. So it, maybe you have it set to 120 or something like that. So that I got to through open U, uh, preferences, open settings, UI, and then just search. You search for all the places where the word wrap is mentioned. Wrap navigation for bookmarks. Debug console word wrap. Controls of the line should wrap in the debug console. All sorts of places where we might find the word wrap. Okay, yeah, no problem. I'm just like reviewing the code I've written to see if like I see any um, code smells. We don't need these, probably don't need these comments, right? These were from the tutorial I copied it from. I'll leave these. Those don't go without saying. Yeah, see the fact that we have to get rigid body set in here. I'm not sure I kind of like. We need that for bodies. So where do we use bodies? Oh, we don't need them at all? No, I'm just not searching the right thing. 
Oh, right, right. So it's here, it has to do with my note. So if we're like, if we're like encapsulated in the model instance, then we wouldn't, this module could be completely independent of the fact that we're using Rapier for our um, physics engine, right? Let that be a concern of the model itself, which is sort of an integration point, right? Well, thank you for the follow. Um, instance. So here's where we kind of like have a little bit of integration between things, right? The scale of the model is independent of the physics engine because that's really scaling the graphics. In the physics engine, we bake in a scaling. Right? Yeah. The collider shape. The collider shape has to have the scale baked into it. Draw order. Really is to help the renderer, right? Yeah, this is this instance is going to be like a place where things come together. Right? This is where we have to glue the physics engine to the to the graphics. Which is that really, right? Okay, so I'm okay with this module like importing from the graphics and the uh physics engine. Okay. Render use WGPU a lot, right? Yeah. Extensively. Wondering if this could be moved into the render. So like where do we use a buffer and a descriptor? We create them there, okay. Okay, and then where do we need device extension? Down here. Okay, in the same place. Okay, good to know. I went the wrong way. Went the wrong way. <laughs> went to the other file, so the back up to here. And what do we use? Bind group. All in the same place. So these imports all have to do with each other, right? That kind of makes me feel that this section of code... Okay, this is different, though. We do need to have a buffer. These, though, all went for the same purpose. They're all imported for the same purpose in a small section of code, which may, makes me think it's another place where we should separate it. Um, okay, and this is a, it's almost the same thing. It's another, it's a variant of create buffer. And then we probably, we only need to, I bet we only need to use the device to create those buffers, right? So if I like, um, commented out the device. Yeah, that, that really does make me think that, um, maybe when we create the model, we should be just having the buffers passed in. And where new is called from the app here. Maybe we go through the renderer first. And the renderer takes our um, geometries. And puts them into buffers for us. And then gives them to the model. So let me put another note. Note. Maybe we should have the renderer do this part. Maybe um, by uh, wrapping the uh, new call to go through the renderer first. Okay. 
All right, let's go somewhere else. But these are all sort of like model what we see in the GUI. By the way, I haven't run this program all day. You guys haven't even seen what, what this actually does, have you? My apologies. If I showed you what it actually did, maybe it'd be more interesting. There we go. So, uh, stole some Minecraft textures just to play around. Uh, but we have um, a combination of some just elementary graphics and physics. I can um, select individual cubes and move them around with this kick. Yeah, I can rotate the camera around. Or I could rotate it this way. I don't really need that reset button anymore, do we? Or maybe reset just um, clears everything. You think? Yeah, I think it's satisfying. Especially if I hit that button a lot. Stress test the thing. Add, add a thousand at a time. Kill the bitrate on the stream. <laughs> So that it's really just a playground that I've been using to learn uh, the libraries that I've uh, that are doing the graphics and the physics here. Okay. So yeah, this info overlay is responsible for all the information that we see here. Make sure it doesn't have something else. So this is how we like give feedback to the UI. So. For example, if you press the kick button, it sends a kick message to the app. And if we see where that's used, see in the app, calls the kick cube me uh, method, which applies some force to the uh, selected cube body. If you don't have one selected, it doesn't do anything. Huh, that could go down here. Oh, it can't, right. It had to go up there because of the borrow problem. Because this is uh, borrowing the rigid body from self, so um, we can't do another borrow of self after that. Yeah, borrow checker trivia, right? Why can't we take this line of code and move it down to here? It's because when we borrow self to call get cube body, it returns a reference. So that reference, the compiler will say like, while we have cube body, um, that means we're we're already um, borrowing. Um, I think it's because this is borrow mutable. Yeah, a mutable borrow. So we're holding a mutable borrow to self, and um, to uh, copy kick force out of the info overlay that requires a separate reference a borrow and you can't have two borrows you can't have when you have a mutable borrow you can't have any other borrows of the same thing so um, for the lifetime of cube body we can't look at self anymore so if i wanted to look at self to get the kick force out we have to do it before we, we find the body the alternative would be to not have a mutable reference to the cube body at all but then that would mean that to to move the cube, I'd have to like, there'd have to be a way to move the cube even though it's immutable, which is sort of a conflict, right? This is sort of an artifact of like when we only have one cube, so maybe what we can do is um, have reset, just reset everything. Reset everything. Do I have an initial state? Maybe a new?
default, or is it used? That's the only place it's used. Okay, so why don't I make, um, why don't I make info overlay just to implement default then? Oh, it can't because we have to give it the sender. But why do we need to pass that in? Why can't that just be a default we set? Yeah, why am I setting the FOV there? That doesn't make a whole lot of sense, does it? Yeah, it's not used anywhere else, so why are we doing that? Why not just delete that? Okay, and then just delete that. And then remove it. Well, it's because I had it coupled with min and max, but it doesn't really... Well, we could leave it there. We can leave it there. This new can um, just use default. Set to import it, right? Yeah. A little bit cleaner. I do have to, if I want to reset the info overlay, I do need to have that sender around, right? If I make a new one. Info overlay has a reset. Then these other values would be um, could be set by that reset. I'm thinking of like remaking the reset to uh, reset the program back to initial condition. But maybe I don't mess with the info overlay at all. But that is a little bit cleaner. Let's uh, see. Yeah, I think I want to in reset cube just delete everything and then make the first cube again. Okay, how do we destroy everything? Wouldn't it just be? Um, oh, I was gonna say, wouldn't it just be? clear the models set, the instance set, but we also have to remove them from the physics engine. So how do we do the uh, destroy lost models? How does this work? Okay, so given a collider, we can find, <clears throat> we can find the, um, Model handle is a member of the colliders, right? Right, it's the user data. But can I go the other direction? Can I get the collider from the model? I don't think so, right? We have a handle to the rigid body. Oh, right. So we from the rigid body, we could get to the lighter, right? So I could just um, say for um, body. Oh, well, in first instance, right? For instance, in self dot model instances. Dot values. We don't care about the handles. Um, instance dot rigid body dot wait, that's an optional? Why is it an option? Oh, because the ground doesn't have one, right? So this would be uh, only if let sum body equal that. The rigid body handle, it's a, I have to like get it from the physics engine, right? Self dot 
physics world dot bodies dot get so then wouldn't I just want to do a map or end then? Then the body is a rigid body, so can I get the collider from it? It's like parent, right? Or is it collider? Oh, interesting. So you can have more than one collider? Huh. Didn't know that. So we'd want to remove them all, right? For collider in colliders. So uh, self dot physics world oops physics world dot lighters remove uh collider handle the lighter and we have to fill in these other things right so islands is self dot physics world dot island manager bodies is self dot physics world dot bodies wake up is true so dereference it where's the immutable borrow 755 oh um to get the rigid body handle So I want to do like copied, right? Can I not copy a rigid body handle? What's oh, a rigid body? Uh, okay, shoot. So, hmm. I guess that means I got to collect all the colliders then. Then go through and delete them all. Okay, well, that's not too hard. So let the lighters it's going to be self dot model instance dot values dot map instance <clears throat> to instance dot rigid body and then get the rigid body out uh collect no and then is that could yeah right so it's another and then this is really a handle i guess we could just say handle Missing I in colliders. Oh, thank you. Appreciate that. So um, body dot colliders, right? And then I'm going to want to flatten them, right? Flatten. Do the flatten outside. Flatten. So what types do I get? Flattened map. That's not right. Um, oh, map. So I got an iterator of collider handles, right? So then I uh, collect those. And we'll put them into a vector. So then we relinquish our um, 
borrow of self so that we can now just say for collider in colliders, not body colliders. Right? And then I can um tell the world to remove them. We don't need to say that anymore, right? Oh, our the slices are still in there. Um, I don't want. Hmm. Do I have to go flatten again? Or do I iterate into iterator and then the flatten will do it for me? No, it's still a vector of slices. I want it to like. Yeah, that's not right. Um, do I have to flatten again? <laughs> yeah, I had to flatten twice. And it still gave me borrows. So um, I want to do copied. There we go. Finally, we got a vector of collider handles. Now it's probably telling me I can do a flat map, right? Filter map, filter map, filter map. Why filter map? Oh, because um, filter map will drop the nuns. Okay. I understood that right then. Um, this is redundant. Why is that redundant? Hold on. Oh, just the method itself? Just colliders? I have to have the type in front though, so it's rigid body colliders. Okay. Interesting that I had to like filter and then flatten and then copied. Okay, so we got the correct type. And this will take care of removing the rigid body too. So then I all I need to do is just clear this map again then here. Clear. All right, let's try it out. So if I did this right, then um, reset will just like delete everything and then add one, the, the, the first, um, this one back. What? Okay, so let's try it. Add a bunch of cubes, reset. Oh, except the ground disappeared. <laughs> so we deleted the ground model. Didn't mean to do that. So let's skip the ground. So right here, if um, instance dot model type equals model type ground. Uh, return none. I guess a cleaner way of doing that would be like filter here. So like this, not equal to ground. Right, then we don't have to have that ugly um, imperative logic. There we go. I wonder if I can put it into the filter map too, somehow. All right, so add a bunch of cubes and then reset. Ground is still being deleted. Oh, uh, because I did that. So really I didn't need to do that because we're not gonna find a ground collider, are we? Oh, it doesn't hurt to do that filter. So yeah, I can't really do that. I have to take the ground out. Maybe I take the ground out and put it back in. So let ground equal self dot model instances. Oh, we need to know the grounds um handle though.
Well, I guess I can just add the ground. Uh, we already have the gr create model ground. Okay. I can either add the ground back or um they going to say as we're um removing them out we could remove them from the model instances too that we'd have to we'd have to re go back from collider to model that's probably what i should do though right i'm doing that uh in the uh delete cubes one too destroy lost model instances right so we do this one Oh, but I had to have collected the model handle from the collider. Okay. I can do this. It'll just be kind of similar to this. We'll have both colliders and model handles. So take that and go back to reset. And there. And then we're going to have collider and handle model. Let's rename this. It's not really the collider, it's the handle to the collider. And um, this isn't really colliders, is it? It's collider. This is handles, really. And then um, I can move the copied into here. Uh, okay, what is it? Um, what's copied a uh, function of? Iterator. Right. Can I not do that? Oh, because it has to be flattened first. Shoot. Okay, so um, so then it really is copied, right? Forget that. It's this problem is when we map it to colliders. If, hmm, moment that I do this, comma, instance, wait, I had them up here. How do I handle my, how do I want to handle this? Okay, so I did keep the collider. Okay, this is really not the collider. This is, no, that really is the collider. How did I get the um, model handle out of it? Oh, by doing that. But I start with the handle, model handle. So it would be like, um, model handle. No, it's instance handle, right? <sighs> what is it? Model instance, instance handle to an instance. So those weren't really handles at all, actually. <laughs> Handle, comma, instance. But then, yeah, okay. No, it becomes, right, it becomes handles. We 
which is going to be that, well, hold on. So um, if I do iter, and then now it's um, handle and instance. And then I just put handle here. reference okay but we have a type mismatch here yeah it's just one is optional the other one's not optional um, I guess we do um, we have to put this inside of here, right? Yeah, so um, we do that, and then in this map here, um, goes again to um, body. If we have a body, then it's handle and colliders. Uh, body dot colliders, right? Yeah. See, now we we can't really flatten it very easily. <laughs> Doesn't show me the complete type either. Um, so I can't. Fl what does flat flatten in general do? Okay, it just wraps it with another iterator, which reaches in and takes the things, right? Ah, uh, this is gonna be a problem, right? So if I don't flatten or copy, what do I get? Then I get a vector of references. So I don't want to reference. I want to dereference that. I get a, re a vector of tuples where it's, it's uh, the model handle and then this slice. So it's I want to, um, I don't want to have that borrow persist. I want to collect those in turn. Oh, I guess I could. I can either collect them internally. Yeah, I think that's what I gotta do. I gotta like collect these into another vector. Uh, into iterator. And I have to um, do copied. Okay, so a vector of model handles, and each model handle has a vector of colliders. So, so this it's it's backwards. Then it's model handle and collider handles. And then it's um, for collider handle and collider handles. That. Okay. Uh, is it telling me I don't need to do an into iter? Yes. But I still need the iter, right? Don't want to copy them. Called iter, copied, collect on a slice to create a vec. Oh, calling two vec is better. There we go. <laughs> yeah, ten spin profiled your three DM MMO on the Vision Five to Risk V SBC with their tools and set the log. Now patience for a new OpenGL driver. Like, is the driver you have right now too slow? Hey there, Amok. What you see on your monitor looks like wallpaper from Matrix with green letters and numbers. You mean this? All this? I suppose that's how it would look if you don't know much about programming. And maybe if you maybe even if you did know programming and you weren't familiar with the syntax of Rust, it would look a little bit um uh, indecipherable. Uh hopefully it's uh, with some of the names it kind of gives a clue. 
So it's not reset cube anymore. It's like reset world. To reset the simulation world, we're going through all the mo inst all the model instances and getting all the handles out of them. And then the handles have handles to the model and the colliders. And we're um, removing the model from using the handle and we're removing the colliders out of the physics world from it. And then when we're done, we should have nothing but the ground left. And then we add our first cube back to it. So like with with the names, hopefully that helps. Okay, at this point we don't need the handle. So if I did this right, then um, the, phys the, the, the simulation world, which is a ground plane, which you'll see in a moment, yeah, ground plane and then cubes in it. When I hit reset, um, all the cubes should disappear, but the ground should remain. And then our first cube should come back like that. So it works. And that number one confirms that it actually doesn't have any like orphaned cubes. Should always go back down to one. 0.5 FPS. Uh, I wouldn't get your hopes up. <laughs> I think you're gonna have a low FPS, like unless you're expecting to get like two orders of magnitude improvement. Dumb question, Tinspin. Is it release build or debug build? <laughs> <laughs> okay cool so cool so reset now like i can use that anytime if like it gets too crazy like that and i hit oops, re reset back back to the start i still am calling it reset cube so let's just call it reset world okay Check this in, I guess. Been kind of sloppy with my git commits. Reset button. Re um, make reset button reset the world, the whole world. Reset the whole world. OK. Energy cannot disappear. If it gets hot without FPS, something is wrong. Oh, there's a bug. On Raspberry 4, you get 100 characters at 60 FPS. Oh. So something's wrong. It's, it's doing something inefficient. Gotcha. All right. Yeah, these are the messages we can get the, back to the app from the info model, which is the UI. Okay. Found uh, literal. So we really shouldn't have these literals, right? This should be like gravity. Gravity what? Should I have the whole th whole vector be gravity? Probably should have the whole vector be gravity, right? This whole thing. Define gravity um, at the very top level. Vector three F sixty four, I think it is. Can't do into here. Because it's non const. Well bummer. Can't do that, so we'll just make it a three D array. This is the force of, well, the, not really the force. This is the acceleration. Every object in the simulated world. Experiences. 
due to gravity. Okay, so then back here, is we're going to have to do an import. I have to do it into, or is it a try into unwrap because it's an array? Didn't I have a utility to help me here? Hold on, go back to into. It doesn't know how to do it, uh, but that, I'd like to be able to do that, so can I make a utility for this? Yeah, so, oh, I have a from tuple. What if I have, um, just make it a tuple and do from tuple. So I'll just make it a tuple. Oh, but then I have to do this, right? I have to say it's a, I have to repeat myself, F32, F32, F32. Uses methods functions must have a self parameter. How have I been using it? Vector three for okay, fine. <laughs> I'm starting to dislike this now. All right, but. We're good now, right? <laughs> you, you wish you knew someone with a SI5 unmatched with Radeon GPU? That's the same CPU as the FB, VF2? Okay. That, okay. So out of curiosity, if I like add a one there, what does it actually do to, um, everything should accelerate faster now, right? Yeah, everything accelerates faster. If I make that less, everything should float. All slower. Oh, there it goes. It fell, but very slowly. Things like drifting. Okay. What next? I'm going to close my window because it's getting cold. All right. I was thinking I'd really, I would kind of like get a breakdown of the render time between the different things that we're doing. Because I don't think just drawing these two things should take a millisecond. <clears throat> Seems to be like it could be that we're running in a virtual machine that just does take a millisecond. But I would think this would be down to the microseconds.
Yeah, I'm kind of indecisive of what to do next. Maybe maybe I should try to get the other back end stuff going. That would be useful for me if I want to integrate these libraries into full tick. Maybe that's what I do. So checking what I have here. So this is just refactoring gravity out, right? Because I felt like it. When do you when else do you get the chance to say that you refactored gravity? Never. Okay, so it should be empty. Okay. So the full tick implementation, that's if I do FLTK, and we have a problem that it doesn't step the simulation until I click. That's the first problem, right? Is that we need it to like run the event loop, trigger the event loop at least once every uh, one over 60 FPS. So hold on, close others. Compare these two. Oh, hello, kitty. The kitty wants to say hello. Hello. You're, you're not purring loud enough. There you go. Purring loud enough. You wanted to say hello to chat, didn't you? Kitty. Okay. So how do I do the... Uh, main window um, vent loop here. Here. Okay, so I think it's in here, right? In handle event. Best redraw? No. No redraw requested. One of these, right? I think it's this. It's handled through this set wait until, and then we naturally will get a window event of type uh, uh, one of these, right? No, it's not a window event, right? It's not a window event at all. It's this new event, resume time reached, right? So it's next draw time which comes from this repaint after. So we're not pro we're probably not using the repaint after and redraw, right? So this is giving us a duration and we're not using it, right? We get a warning that we're not so we actually want to use that because we want it to trigger um a refresh. Now is now. If it's greater than next redraw time, then so if we reach the next redraw time, then we update our last draw time to be that next point. So I wonder if this logic could be put into redraw, right? That way, this like it sh should be independent of back end. This this stuff. If it is independent, then um, that means redraw should spit out um, either duration max, which means we don't we don't wait, which we probably won't get unless I turn off uh, the physics engine, right? Or it'll give me a duration that we um, no, it'll give us an absolute time. That's what we want, right? Wait until that absolute time. Okay. So that's uh what is an uh, instant? That's an instant. Yeah. So we should re we should have um redraw return an instant and have the redraw function do this code for me. I think. So this last and next shouldn't belong. They don't belong here. They really belong in the app. Hey there, maximum Homer Drive. How are you doing? I'm moving stuff around on my app here. So. Uh, that moves to the app, right? So we're going to move it. Or 
Right, so um, this returns a duration now, right? Yeah, so we're, we need this to return an instant, and it'll be in this self, which is inner. That's not where I told it to go. Go to inner, there we go. So we need to put that uh, last draw time and next draw time here now. Don't know what's happening, but I got this. I can just sort of explain what I'm doing. Can't run the code, so I'll have to just manually run the last build. So we have this um, combination of a physics engine and, um, and a graphics drawing to create this virtual world, right? Where I just put some arbitrary stuff to draw in there that we have fun with, right? And um, the back end, like the, what, what library we use to actually um, get the window in the first place and interact with the mouse and the keyboard and such is W in it right now. And I was um, going to add full tick and SDL2 as other options. So uh, the problem with that right now is that you pick the full tick it makes the window, but the physics engine doesn't run, and you can't interact with the UI here. So I'm doing one one step at a time right now. Um, I need it to actually um, run the physics engine, so it should go to 60 FPS, right? Um, so that it's real, uh, it's running at a realistic rate. That's what I'm working on right now. Um, the the logic to say when to to draw next was in the W init host here, um, well, the, the the values were here and the code is down here somewhere, somewheres, right here. This is the code that figures out when to draw next, right? So it shouldn't just go with W and it, it should go with all three, W and it, full tick and SDL. So it should be in the common part of the app. So I'm, um, I decided I would take it out of the W and it window and move it into the app. And then, then the code has to go with it. Hi there, Betseg. Where's the stone texture from? That's not 16 by 16. Sure it is. It is 16 by 16. It's from my new block texture that I got. Um, how do I zoom? There we go. We're gonna zoom in. Gonna go up. And we're gonna go left. So I believe I am picking out of here. 16 by 16. Maybe the... Um, Maybe the the uh, the stream, the encoding being done in the stream doesn't make it um, uh, is messing with it. But yeah, these are. Where's a good one like this one? That's sixteen by sixteen on all sides. It is. I promise. Shaded well, then your internet was too slow for the bit rate. Yeah, it sort of kills the stream when I do that, right? Okay, so I'm moving the logic that says like how fast to redraw from wnit to like the main app so that we can leverage it in the full tick. So if I, I move the variables there, so I broke everything that references those variables, right? So here, the um, where we initialize them has to move to the main app on here. Okay, and then what's next? So where we compute this stuff, right? Um, where we get the, the the current time and then we advance the next draw time. That should be, I guess it doesn't really matter, right? Because we don't use repaint after. So that can, that can go anywhere in the redraw. So that is down here somewhere. Redraw. So, hey, let's put it here. So we have a render start, so we don't need a... Let's just use now instead of render start. So I'll turn render start into now. This, some old code we can get rid of. Okay, the next piece is this part, right? So we're gonna just take that out. And this is what we're going to um, turn that um, 
value at the bottom of redraw, which was a duration. So let let um, repaint after equal that. Then we're going to paste um, this code to, to use that repaint after. And we're going to import max from standard compare and all this junk. And then um, that's what we're going to return. So it's no longer a duration, it's an instant. Okay, so that breaks a few different things, right? So we're actually returning a boxed function that returns an instant, not a duration. Okay, and then... Um, this is not a repaint after, now it's a next draw time. And we're not going to have this wait for everything anymore. We're just going to say, wait until that time. The handle redraw requested becomes a lot simpler, right? <laughs> okay, so this redraw is an instant, not a duration now. Import time. Okay. Event response. Do I need to do this? I don't even know if I need to do this part yet. I think this is redundant now. This is the eGUI telling us when to repaint, right? But we're already um, going to be... Um, Every time we redraw, we're going to be um, setting it up to redraw the next frame anyway. So maybe we can ignore eGUI now. I'll hazard a guess that we can just ignore this. Let's just ignore it. Let's just always update it. Okay, now what? Right, this handle um, has to, uh, this redraw function has to be an instant. A lot of things are broken now because some places say duration, others say instant. So we're moving from duration to instant. Okay, and this whole thing is bad because of why. It, um, the trait itself has to be changed. So that's up here, right? In the app? No, it's in the main. Right. The trade itself here, um, this has to say instant. Okay. okay. We don't need to import duration anymore. But we do need to import duration, or instant. Okay. A couple imports we don't need. We don't need max draw rate. We don't need the max, or we don't need the duration. Okay, so is it just full tick that has a problem now? Yeah, so this has to say instant. Use instant. So this is um, next, what do we call it? Call it something, find out what it's called. When we call redraw in event loop, where is my event loop? Here it is. Um, this went to handle event. Went to here. Next draw time is what it's called. Okay, and then uh, what am I doing with that? I need to tell full tick that we're going to draw when we get to that time. So without doing that, this should build again, but um, it should still be frozen. 
I think if you do control X while not select anything, VSC will cut the line. I think you're right. So you see now we have a block frozen in space. If I click, it moves one step. Okay, so we need to figure out how to tell full tick when to redraw. I have to look at full tick's manual for this. I remember it being some kind of callback thing. Do I have a full tick tab? Probably don't. Might be time to like close some of these tabs. Hello, kitty. Hey, look, it's a kitty. Kitty. You got to purr louder to get past the noise gate. It's like, let me down. I want to play with you. I don't want to play with chat. She wants attention. But I can't give her attention and you attention at the same time. I got it like one at a time, right? Giving Chad some attention right now. It was loud enough. I didn't see the bar move very much. <laughs> okay, here's something we can reuse. So I can just go to home, libs. Full tick, RS, API reference. So it's like a callback, I think. Uh, too many things called callback, or is it called idle? Idle, add idle? Because what we want to happen is we want uh, the event loop to wake up after when a certain uh, time is reached. So right now, it's sitting in the run, right? And we have a we have a callback when we resize. So that's about it. So if I ran it now and I start resizing the window, it would actually start moving, right? See the physics engine moves. Like if I um. I can't interact with that yet. That's another problem. But that cube moved as, as long as I resized the window. It, it settled down. Uh, but I need to have a callback. Like, I'd like to have a callback when a certain time gets reached. There's this idle thing that will get called back a lot. I guess we could, we could, we could just see if the next draw time has been reached. Calls to redraw within the callback require an explicit sleep. What does that even mean? So maybe there's a timer? Time? Add timeout. Oh, here we go. One shot timeout. That's sort of what we need, right? It takes a time as an F64. It's a duration. So we'd have to like get the current instant and compute a duration from the difference, right? I mean, we can try that. Add timeout three. The function takes a handle. We pass in, okay, so um, it would be window, well, not here. I guess it would be right here, right? Window dot, oh, hold on. Um, it, it's not this redraw. Well, I guess it's gonna be in two places, right? Because don't we call redraw twice? Um, yeah, in here somewhere, right? What do we call redraw? Find all references. Oh, it's right there. I was looking straight at it and I didn't see it. So yeah, that is also inside here. So it makes me think that I should have, um, like some, some free function to do this, right? Um, and it has to operate on a window, so 
Uh, what happened there? That got duplicated somehow. So yeah, let's move this to a free function of some kind. So like um, function free draw. Uh, what's the type of that window? Single window. And uh, we have this uh, redraw, right? Okay. Guess I can't call it FN. How do we call it F? I guess we can use the same word, right? Redraw. So then I'm moving this code down into there. Just for now. So this should just say uh, redraw. Does it need to be mutable? I don't think it does. Window and um, redraw. Okay, what'd I get wrong? Take zero arguments, what? Okay, it's because I have too many things named redraw. So, um, I don't know, do redraw? <laughs> okay, and then the whole point is that I can call it in multiple spots and it has the same code inside of it, right? Um, what's the problem here? Move because it's borrowed. Move out of window occurs on line 90. Oh, uh, right. Um, but we get the window back in here, right? It's one of these arguments, I think. I just don't know which one it is. Consult the book of armaments. So resize window. Is that not what it's called? Resize callback. A uh, single window, right? Uh, window, window, where are you? Here we go. So it's that first argument. Window. There we go. And it's already a reference, so we don't need to dereference it, or don't have to take a reference again. <sighs> okay. <laughs> Chapter 2, verses 9 to 21, yeah. You can put an R hash before identifiers to stop the compiler from parsing them as a reserve words. Curse idea, use R F N for that callback. So you're saying that this could be uh, R F N? That does seem cursed. We have to do that, right? There's a similar thing you can do in Swift, right? And that's to use backticks. Yeah, but let's not be evil. Okay, so I have redraw in here. And I pass in the window on purpose because we want to do window uh, set callback. Is it set callback? I can't remember now. Let's add timeout. <laughs> Is it not on the window? Oh, it's on the app. Oh, shoot. We need it on the app, not the window. Okay, so we need the app. Type of app is app. Not helping me. I think because I got errors. Hold on. I need to save maybe. Uh, I don't know why it's not helping me. Uh, maybe because it's uh, maybe because of the errors I have. Okay, so instead of window, it's app. So we don't need the window here. But let's remember that it's window, because you know maybe we maybe we'll need the window sometime. 
Okay, so app dot. I'm thinking it's like an extension trait that we don't have. That's why it's. Yeah, let's see what it says. Should be there. Full tick app. Is it the wrong app class? Is it my app class? And where's app? That is the full tick app. So why am I not getting? Why am I not getting an add timeout three from that? I just noticed something. Um, there's no self there. So I don't actually don't need an app, do I? It's just app add timeout three, right? Really? Okay, I must be misreading this. Oh, it's from the module. Takes two arguments. Okay, so we don't need the app at all. Interesting. I thought I would need the actual app reference. Guess I don't. Hey there, Stripe Monkey. How are you do doing? I'm doing fairly well. Although I'm kind of chilly. I should probably turn off the fan. I have to have the fan running because I got cat and cat stuff. And it just smells. Unless I'm running the fan. But then... It's cold. Urgh. <laughs> okay, it needs two arguments, right? One of them's gonna be um they want a duration in seconds. So I'll wanna get like the current time. So let now equal instant now and then like let time or um timeout equal um, next draw time duration since now in uh, as seconds F64 okay and then um, this wants the timeout first and then the function so it's timeout and then a function that get that takes the timeout handle, which I don't care about. And then we're going to just um, what are we gonna do? We want to like trigger a redraw. Oh, so I did I did need the window because. Um, oh, no, we just called do redraw again, right? Uh, but don't we have a problem where? Oh no, it can own it, right? So I can just say move. You can own the own uh it's a borrow though. This is gonna be a problem. This is this is I'm gonna run afoul of the bar borrow checker. Gonna say that um you can't do that. It borrowed escapes. So I'm inclined to um move from box to RC, right? That's given to us as a a box, but we can move it into an RC, right? And I can't. I can. Should, can you cast from a box to a to just put it into an RC new? Because then I could just um, duplicate it, right? I can give the resize callback its own reference. I just uh, realized something. Um, this is going to trigger a timeout, and then this is going to trigger its own timeout. So that's not really what we want, is it? <laughs> I kind of want okay. I kind of want what what W in it does, right? So it sets up something that comes back in as an event in the event in in the in the event loop. Full tick operates differently, right? Unless maybe I can give myself an event. Yeah, so what I really want is some way to say like window dot um post event redraw. 
This is pseudocode, right? I kind of want a way to say that. Can we do that though? Hey there, King440. Learning Rust and you're kind of lost with if let. Do I have an if let in this file? No. I have one here. Yes. Really easy to understand if let. So if body is an optional rigid body handle, it means we might not have one, right? Rigid body handle is a thing that we might have or we might not have. So it means body could have one of two values. It's either none or it's some rigid body handle, right? So what if let does is it does a pattern match. So if body matches the pattern some something, then it goes into the if and you get access, it's called a binding, you get access to what was inside of that body, the actual handle. Can I explain? I wonder if I explained your code example just now. Yeah, so you have an if let integer equals optional integers dot pop, right? So when you pop the vector, you'll get some integer. Unless the vector was empty, then what pop does is it returns none. So it calls pop, it says, hey vector, do you have something? The vector says, yeah, here you go, here's something. Then you get a sum integer out. Um, but if you didn't have anything, you'd get none back. Um, you, the if let that you have on your line 14 is kind of weird though, because you have if let integer. You sh it, usually it, it's of this form, if let sum, and then you'd have integer inside of there. Um, that's the way it's typically used. Yeah, th because you didn't have the sum out here, um, you actually like caused it to be an option of an option instead of a, just a one a one level option. So try adding the sum with parentheses around the word integer to the right of the let. Probably you'll fix that. I make that mistake a lot because um, this is how it would look like in Swift. In Swift, um, it's optional instead of option. And um, it's always assumed that you are unwrapping in this binding, that this is the thing inside of the right-hand side. But Rust is, is, is more generic. You can have any kind of pattern here, which is why you can get um, into the trap of, if you forget to have the sum, then the type is wrong. It's now an option. The option didn't get unwrapped. And so you have the problem here where it's like, well, I expected a body handle, you gave me an optional body handle. It's like, well, that's because I should have, I should have done um, a, a narrower pattern saying we're only going into the if, if it really is something. Why do you have a vector of option? Are we analyzing why he has a vector of options anyway? It's still complaining, probably because of the other thing that was pointed out. Um, you have, you have, a you've wrapped all of your integers in option for some reason. So why did you do that? Just remove option. And then when you push, just push I. Um, you only need to have option wrap the thing. If you want to have some nuns in there with your integers. So. Usually, there's two ways you use option. Um, it's where you, you at a certain point in your code, you may or may not have something. And then the other way you use option is usually in the return value of a function to say that I have nothing to give you, which is what vector pop is using option for. So you you're sort of have two uses of option going on there. Your vector might have, like every slot in your vector may or may not be an integer. And also vector pop might tell you there's nothing in the vector at all. Those two different usages of option. That's probably why you got an option option, because the outer option says whether or not you got something from the vector. The inner option is what vector gave you, which may or may not be an integer. And that's where um, Tired Beaver was going, um, saying that you probably didn't want to have vector option. You want to just have a vector of i8s. 
it's rustling's exercise options too. It just forcing you to like really think about what option means in different contexts, right? All right, so I what I'm looking for with full take is a way to tell the window that we want to redraw from the event loop itself. So um Yeah, that's redraw and then take that time and somehow somehow tell full tick that after that time is reached we need to redraw again. So that's the question how to do this in general. Maybe um maybe it's not add timeout. Wouldn't we just tell the window to redraw itself? Like, can't we just say draw, redraw? App redraw, redraws everything. Isn't that what we want? Just app redraw, right? So maybe that's all I need, app redraw. I feel like that's not the right thing, right? Um, that's not redrawing our portion of it, is it? Hey there. Katemoy, how are you doing? Doing okay. I'm getting a little chilly, though. I think I might need to turn off my fan and close the window. Let me go do that right now while I think about it. Temporary chair stream while I was... Closing the window. If you're that new, you shouldn't be doing rustlings. I don't know about that. Um, Bet Seg, I I like to say it matter. It depends on your learning style. So go to learn or go to rustlang.org and go to learn. The rustlings course is that middle option. Um, but I guess. To say it a different way, maybe the rustlings course isn't the best way for um, King to go about it. So you're suggesting go the left path instead of the middle path, right? You feel desperate, put so much work into this, and now you're stuck with the falling error in render doc. GL error, GL invalid enum is enabled. Generic error. Uh, that's the problem with OpenGL, like a Tamoy, is that if you screw up something in the OpenGL state, you get a pretty generic error out of OpenGL. <laughs> so uh, you could search online for that ex is that exact ID number, I guess. You might find a little a clue about which enum it is. Please open a few more browser tabs. It'll just make me more cranky if I open more browser tabs. <laughs> I don't think this is correct. This is going to redraw the full tick um, stuff, but it's not going to redraw us. Might have to like go to something else in full tick to um figure out how to do this or look at just look at the top level here how you typically use it try to debug every single line you know you also know what that error means but your code isn't the issue as the parameters are fine contacted render doc support what's so what is render doc It's normal to feel. Uh, I don't know about if ang you're, are you anger because you get, don't you didn't get an answer from their support. Is that 
something they're obliged to give you an answer within a certain amount of time. I can understand if you feel frustrated. Anger is... What is it? Anger leads to suffering? <laughs> no, anger leads to hate. Hate leads to suffering. Angry because you spent the last three days debugging. Frustrated is a better word, not angry. Anger leads to hate, exactly. Um, yeah, I don't know what to say because that GL invalid enum is very generic. So it could be a lot of different things, right? So at some point, one of the enums you used with, a, with an open GL function was, was the wrong enum. So it could be like, uh, what is it? GL, like GL depth or something, right? Takes an enum, right? So if you call, let's say you call GL depth function, but you didn't give it one of these enums, right? But what happened to my browser? My browser window crashed. No, no, it just brought me back out to downloads, which I don't need. Software updater. Oh, we'll update that one later. Yeah, so here's an example, right? You call GL depth function, but these are the only the these are the only valid enums that you can give it. Problem is that um, the API for OpenGL uses GL enum, which is wider than these values, right? It's it could have other valid values, and it won't catch it at compile time. It'll be at runtime. You get like oh GL invalid enum because you you use something that's not in this subset when you use GL depth functions. So you gotta look at all of the GL functions that take a GL enum and make sure every single one of them is in the allowed subset for that function call. Ubuntu, no? Well, give me another option because um, I'm only using Ubuntu because I'm running on Parallels VM and on a Mac Studio and the only two distros that I found that I could work was um, yeah, Debian was the other one, right? I tried Debian 11.7, and it was really far behind on almost everything. Um, I couldn't get Arch to run because I'm not that. I'm not. A, I'm not a. I'm not a Linux Chad. I can't get Arch to run. Android is Linux, right? It's a. It uses a Linux kernel, but it's more than Linux, right? Manjaro. Everyone has their own favorite Linux distro, right? I'm okay with Ubuntu. It gets the job done. Uh, where was I that I was looking? Like, was I on this tab? I reused it? No. Yeah, I forgot what tab I was on. This is the problem. Let's just delete some of these old tabs. Probably don't need image. We don't need old DuckDuckGo searches. I was here, right? Okay. So what I'm looking for is a callback that will just like trigger a redraw. Oh, well, hold on. What I had before, right? Where I just called my own redraw? Maybe that's actually all that I need. I just, uh, the problem is the mutability, really. What I'm doing is I'm giving add timeout a closure and that closure ends up calling my redraw function. And yeah. No, I don't want to call redraw. I kind of want to call do, I want it to be recursive in a way, right? Problem is this, that this borrow, we can't use a borrow for that. Also, another problem is that where we have multiple sources of it, so this is not gonna, that's not gonna work either. I really do need it to come back. I, I need to have some kind of custom event that the event loop handles. Unless 
Maybe I'm just not understanding how full tick works. Events can be handled with a set callback. Trigger. Look, can I just have my own custom event? Kind of like a request redraw, like what wnit has. Can I clone? Yeah, but I have another problem where um, this will set up, these two will set up different um, timers. So we'll have too many draws happen, right? And then every every time we call it, it's going to, um, it does two things, right? It redraws and then it sets up a timeout. So if we have two things that cause a redraw, we'll have two timeouts and then two more redraws, which set up. So it'll, it'll, it'll end up um, adding for, for every redraw, we have a timeout for the next redraw, which is wrong, right? Oh, thank you, Epic Unknown. Prime has done more React content. Well, um, you talking about the Primogen? So the Primogen I view as uh, a streamer who does some coding, but mostly it's entertainment, okay? I'm kind of like a different mix. I'm mostly coding and a little bit of entertainment. So that's why we have lots of different streamers on Twitch. You get to pick which, uh, what ratio do you want? How much entertainment versus coding? Um, some some have a really great balance and do like a lot of coding and keep it entertaining and that's what i kind of strive for but i know that i'm maybe not as entertaining as a, a lot of other streamers out there that's fine I have a good radio voice i i i'm uh flattered <laughs> i'm a little bit entertaining yeah i'm just not i'm not as uh i'm not reacting to things as much right what distro am I using? We have a command for that. Well, OS, I think also distro maps to the same thing. Yep. More chill? I, Primogen can be chill. Command should include OS, shouldn't it? Let's fix that. I don't have a help, so... Edit com commands. Let's add OS to it. What else do I want to add? I used to have a frequently asked questions, but the problem is no one asked about it. So they weren't really frequently asked. So commands is really like the kind of the frequently asked things. Are there any good streamers for breaking into the industry? Depends on what industry you mean like coding in general, I think it's kind of broad, uh, be more specific. So like if you wanted to break into the crypto mining industry or crypto industry, there are a couple streamers on Twitch who just do crypto stuff. Uh, game development, there's a whole bunch of people who do game developments and like some of them are in the industry and others are sort of in indie. Um, there's one streamer I know who um, does startups and Primogen likes to joke about being a startup, but there's actually, there actually are streamers who just do startup stuff. Um, but I have a hard time with names. I don't remember their names. <laughs> Mechanical engineer without 20 years of experience. That's quite a bit of experience. You're doing a master's in computer science, not looking to get into robotics. Sounds cool. I would just browse around the category and until you find someone who's like doing something that is somewhat intersecting what you want to do. It's startup, like watching L Lana Lux is mostly game dev, right? All right, I feel like I'm gonna be stuck on this unless I find out a way to register a custom event that comes back. Or I need to stop thinking about this a certain way and like break out of the box. Fundamentally, we want to draw and then we get it. Uh, we want to set up the time to do the next draw. In here, we don't want to draw again, though, right? We want to like cause this to be recalled again. All cause this to be called again. Maybe the trick is that we don't always redraw. We do this first, and we see if the next draw time is the present.
I'm not sure what to do here. Game dev is a derailing rabbit hole for your career. Um, for some people, yeah. But there are other people who have made it work. I kind of think of it as like a musician or an artist in general. Um, it's If you want to be a rock star, you can be, but only a very few um, get to that level. Also, professional gamer. Um, anyone can play games, but only only the top like 0.01% can actually make a living from it, right? Like Rust, but curious, what are your thoughts about Zig? Uh, I took a look at it for like an hour or two, and it's like, eh, it looks cool, but it's just another syntax. That there was nothing, nothing in Zig really compelled, like was compelling to me. Like as in, like, oh, this is this does something so much better. What do you think, game dev as a hobby? I think it's perfectly fine as a hobby. Yeah, there was nothing about Zig that kind of like blew me away that, oh, this is like different and wonderful and no other language has it. It's just like, yeah, just another language. I mean, it's like, there are so many languages out there that have different um, pros and cons. Just pick the language that fits for you. I did game dev as a hobby. Yeah, but now I can't because of my job. Um, what we don't like about Rust is the macro system. I played around with the macro system on Friday and I had trouble with it, but I got it to work. <laughs> All right. Um, I need to have a balance of interacting and trying to get this damn thing to work. Do redraw. We always want to do it, I guess. And that's here. I suppose we'll just trust that this next draw time is correct. So maybe I do turn this just... So if this was a box, this would work, right? If it's mutable. Because we call it and then we kind of give it to the timeout to call the next time. Problem is if I do that, we can't... Um, we'd have to pass it in there, right? And then we can't use it inside of our resize callback. So what if I change this to an RC? Right? Um, ooh, it, that RC might not even be enough, right? Because we can't mutate something inside an RC. So it would have to be like... Um, uh, it's going to have to be a ref cell, isn't it? And we're going to have to like... Yeah, I already know this is probably not the right way to do this. We have to like do redraw dot um, borrow mute and then call it. This all already is looking ugly. It doesn't need to be mutable anymore. That's the whole point. Okay, so then that allows me to do um, this. If we can get it into a, a ref cell, ref cell, new, redraw. Basically jailing it so that we can mutate it from an RC so that this, uh, I can move it in if I, um, give it a clone here. Well, I can just clone it on the call, right? So I can just say redraw.clone. And I probably have to do it in here because this callback is called multiple times. And again, clone it there. Clone the RC everywhere. So it's not mutable anymore. So the box can be turned into an RC. You can do a ref cell from a box. And it just works. Actually, it's an RC ref cell box. And it just worked because the boxed function works as a dying function. Okay. Don't like it completely. I don't 
totally like it, but let's see if it works. <laughs> Backwards compatibility with C code is a differentiation. I don't think I remember trying that. Hey, look at that. Problem is it's drawing twice as fast. That's what that's the bug that I saw, right? We're setting up two timeouts instead of one. Yeah. We don't want to do that. We need there to be a timeout, but it needs to be decoupled from Yeah. How do I say this? We can't always we don't always want to add one, right? We only want to add one if we're inside of if we need we need to set up an initial one and then I think I know what to do. Um we don't want to add a new timeout when we redraw. We we want to like have one set up like no Take that back. The timeout's always going to be different. I think it's if we haven't, if one hasn't fired yet. Oh, this is, this is clumsy and I don't like it. What IDE did devs use back in the day, Visual Studio or something? I remember using Brief. That's still around? Brief? Editor? Oh yeah. This is what I used back in the day. Brief. Look at that. Good old 80, 80 columns by by 30 columns. Uh, but Vim, or used to be VI, has been around forever. So I think a good answer would be Vim. Notepad++? I mean, if you're on Windows, I guess. I think a good answer to what did IDE the devs use back in the day is Vim. Emacs, sure. I used Emacs for a while until I started getting cramps in my hand. <laughs> From all the, like, holding down the control key all the time. Yeah, I don't like this. This doesn't feel right, especially with the double timeouts. I could hack it by um, just doing a, a, just calling redraw here and not do redraw. So if I just do, if I did, uh, I guess it would be redraw.borrow. If I just did that and ignored the, re the callback time, or actually better yet, um, it would be to do, to have this one just redraw. Just do a one-off retraw there. This do redraw is like not the right name, but I don't have a better name. So now it'll go to 60 FPS, right? But then I have the problem that if other things cause a redraw, I'll have I'll end up having two timers again. It's already at the wrong frame rate, it was at 80. Yeah, see, when I click, I'm getting extra redraws. That's not cool. Hmm. Actually, I'm, I'm wondering what's calling my redraws when I click. App? It's not app, right? We're handling a key down to prevent escape, but where? Where am I, win how am I clicking on the window? How is that causing it to actually uh, step? Why use a keyboard when you can use an O-scope to send electrons to the motherboard? Uh, okay. <laughs> am I writing a game engine in Rust? No. 
Just learning these libraries. Are we having an editor's war discussion now? Ed is the editor. That's correct. Everyone knows Ed is the editor. This used to be a really fun web page, a man page. Ed is the editor. Or is it Ed is the standard text editor? I want to see the man page. Yeah, the Ed man page. Ed, text editor. The original text editor. That's where you got to see one line of your file at a time. <laughs> and like, here's a typical session. How do, you, how do you quit, Ed? It's it's like, yeah, Ed is the text standard text editor. <laughs> oh, back in the day. Okay. Um. You know what I'm tempted to do is just comment out this and comment out that and see what happens. And if our window ever gets drawn, like how is that happening? Okay, now it's not drawing when I click. It just got a static, interesting like static snapshot of, it, of everything. So is it this initial draw? Somehow when I click in the window, it redraws. How is that happening? That's what I want to know. Maybe it's this initial redraw. Actually, that I need to comment on my timer for that to, for me to see that. Back, the behavior, the previ previous behavior. GNU is memeware. GNU is not, an, uh, not Unix. What is move? I'll explain that in a second. Okay, now the clicking isn't doing anything so I broke something okay where's a good example of move I guess maybe in my app let me find a good example is that a good one I need a good example like has fewer distractions in it so where's a great example that doesn't have a whole lot of distractions This one's not good. Okay, this one's better. Uh, how about this one? This one's probably the best because it's so simple, right? So this is our event loop for W in it. And so what does this move mean? So I'll break it down. So what run wants to have is an event handler. And the event handler is some type that lives forever and is something that can be called as a function and the MUT part means that it um, is allowed to change itself. So it, it's, the value changes. It has some internal state, right? I didn't mean to change that. So um, some, one thing that implements uh, FN mute would be, um, well, back up. There are two things right here. It's both a function and it has some internal state. So if it was just fn, so if they wrote it like this, they wrote it like that, then you could literally pass a free function to, to, to run and it would just call that function every time the event loop ran, right? Because it's got the MUT part, that means it's, it's uh, like a function object, so it has some internal state. So one kind of function object is a closure. So this is the closure syntax in Rust. You start with the pipes and you have um, curly braces and the curly braces contains the body of the closure. Like you think of it as a function that has some internal state and that internal state comes from two places. One is the function wherever and whenever it's called, it gets parameters. The other thing it can have as internal state are things that are outside, that are declared outside of the closure and somehow get pulled in by reference. So one of those things is self, right? Um, 
So when we say it's a closure, it's, it's a block of code that closes on some context. And that context is all, all the variables that get moved um, or, or, or shared or borrowed by the closure. What the move keyword says is that everything we close on, we move into the closure. So self gets moved into the, the closure that we give to run. That's um, why self is not a borrow reference um, because we're, we're giving the event loop our self so that when the event loop internally runs our uh, calls our closure, we get to have access to ourself because we moved it, we captured it into the closure. I hope that makes sense. So the, the vertical bars are a sign that this is a closure that will be called as a function and these are the function arguments. So every time our closure is called, it's given three arguments, the event, something we don't care about, and the control flow. And um, in addition to using the event and the control flow, we're also using this self. How do we get the self? That is not passed as an argument. We didn't see self passed in as an argument. So where did it come from? The answer is closures are allowed to um, steal things, essentially. Either borrow them or completely steal them from the environment. So self came from here. It, uh, this move keyword says, um, don't just borrow self. Move it into the closure, literally. Move it in so that we can use it there. Consequence is that I can't call anything on self here. So if I did like self dot dragging is none, I'll get a I'll get a um, an error here, right? It's unre okay. It's unreachable because of that. But if like I didn't, let's say I just set up the clo uh, closure equal to that, right? And I didn't I didn't um, return. Um, let's say that we have um, okay. This won't work because of, okay, let's, I gotta mangle my code more to make it. So here, here's the error I was looking for, right? Assigned to part of moved value. Value partially assigned here after move because the value was moved into the closure. We moved in um, this uh, handle event. We moved it into the closure. Interesting that it didn't move the entire self. It only moved part of self. It was trying to help. It was like, okay, you only needed the handle event, so let's just move that thing in. Uh, but still, you can't, um, once you start to pick apart self into different things, partially move it or fully move it, you can't, um, you can't use that anymore. So if we didn't do um, that, now this is okay. Well, we don't have these anymore. This is okay, there's no error there because we're, it no longer moves self into the closure. I hope that makes sense. Not as smooth brain as you thought? What do you mean? Maybe you're stupid, but a closure reminds you of an arrow? Yeah, that is, that's, a, that's also a closure, right? But it's a kind of closure that didn't capture anything. So, a couple synonyms, right? Closure, lambda, function object. Those all mean the same thing. So they're really what is it, it is? It's a function and an object combined. So the function is here. It's literally a single line function, right? The object is hidden. So it's usually hidden. Sometimes not though. Usually hidden. The object in this case is, you, you, can, you can think of that there's a hidden object, like a struct, a closure, and it has myself in it. So this would be this self, right? Self, box, self. So that is this object right here. And to, to make it fully complete, it's like, ha it's like you had an impl closure and then like a principal function like, um, you know, run that takes these arguments, right? Of whatever types they are and then has this block of code in it. 
So that is like the more like concrete, like pseudo code for what that is. We created a function object. So it's a, it's the combination of some state with some function. And that function has access to that state, but usually that state is hidden. So where, when isn't the object part of a function object not hidden? Um, and a good example of that is a C++ function object, where you actually um, declare it as a class and it has an operator parentheses, and then it's a callable object. That's a function object, it's just very literal, right? Okay, I mangled my code again to give that example. But yeah, whenever you see the word closure, function, object, lambda, it's all the same thing. Sometimes you won't actually have the ability to really put into anything to that object. The object might be nil or void, right? So um, like the example you gave about um, this thing, right? Something like, like this example. That's a function object, but um, there's nothing in the object. You didn't capture anything. It, um, it also doesn't have any arguments, so it's a free function. Right? A free function is a function object. Just the the object part is um, nothing. There's no there's no state. Function objects are really really useful because um, they allow you to do a lot of interesting things. Um, But there are subtleties, right? The fact that this thing had to be declared fn mute is because if we didn't declare it as fn mute, then we wouldn't be allowed to change our own state. We could use our state, but never change it. There are actually three um, traits in Rust for function objects. Um, one of them is fn mute. So that means function object uh, where we, why does it think we're in JavaScript? We're in plain text. We're just talking, right? Function object where we can change the object. Let's see, we can change the object, right? There's also fn. We cannot change the object. And there's a third one, which is really interesting. It's called fn once. We will only be called once. So we eat the object. <laughs> eat slash own slash take, whatever, whatever verb you want to use there. Think of it all as the same thing. Um, so fn mute, you can think of it as it gets a mute self, right? F fn gets a self. So what do you think an fn once gets? That's right, it just gets a self. When you pasted, or when I pasted that code, it became JavaScript. Yeah, in Rust you can name a closure. Okay, uh, we can allow that one. Can name a closure like you can in JS, like if and yeah. I think I put this into one of my tutorials on YouTube because function objects are really useful and they're really interesting subtleties between these traits and I get them, I got them confused learning Rust and I still get them confused to this day and I have to remind myself when I see fn mute it means we can change the object that's that's the signature to to um to think about when we see that when we see fn mute think mutable references self when we see fn we can't change the object when we see fn once that means we can we're going to eat the object we can only be called once Right? Why can we only be called once? Because we're gonna take the object and consume it. So once it's done, that's it. Can't be called again. What is the object though? It's whatever you closed on. So it's, it's um, uh, whatever was uh, closed upon. Um, any, any variables that were captured. Can I rap in this context? Not that kind of rap. Yeah. Ah, uh, it messed with my formatting. So in some languages, what you close upon can be explicit. Like in C++, you can actually list in the as a capture list. What do you want to close upon? 
Um, in Rust, it's more um, implied. So it's whatever you reference. So in this case, I closed on self because self wasn't defined as an argument. We didn't have a let self equal something. So it had to search outside of the closure. It had to find what is, where do I get this self? Oh, I see it right here. Same thing, if I, same thing about redraw and resize. Uh, we closed on those by it found it as arguments of the calling function that, uh, of the code that defined the closure, right? So we closed on self, we closed on redraw, we closed on resize. So our object consists of three things, the self, the redraw, and the resize. Event and control flow are not part of the object. They're actually, we're given a new value for both every time we're called. So um, yet to remember that the function can accept arguments. So the variables inside your closure can be the arguments to the function or it could be part of your object. Another way to think of a function object is just like an anonymous class. Anonymous class uh, with one principal function. Um, and you can also think of it as a callable class. These all, these all mean exactly the same thing, right? Which helps, like if you're reading, if you're learning a new language and they say, oh, this is how you do a lambda or a lambda function, right? You'll, you'll automatically know, oh, it, we're just talking about a function combined with an object and it's probably hidden. The object is probably hidden. We'll usually see that it's a function. We'll see that it has arguments or not. The, what we close upon may or may not be obvious, but you, the, where the object is and where it's defined is usually hidden. It's like the compiler generates it internally and it usually gives it a funky name even. So if you're debugging and you see something like anonymous function or anonymous something, you're, you're, you're inside a closure. You just need to think of it as a lambda then because that makes sense to you. Exactly. So you pick whatever term makes sense to you already. And now you know what the other terms mean. So when someone says it's a callable class, you're like, oh, that's lambda. Someone says function object. Oh, I, that's the same thing as closure or lambda. As long as you usually take to announce a hiatus. I don't know what you mean. You're, you're confused now? B is the object. Well, sort of, yes. Yeah. So Betseg said this, right? Betseg said that B is the object. I like to think of it as B isn't the object, but B is something. So your object in that case looks like this. It has a B in it. So this is like our closure. And it has a B of some type B in it, right? But there is an object associated with our closure and it has B in it because you could also have a C. And now what is your, what is your, what is your object? Your object now consists of a B and a C. So it's, the object to me is all of the, is the sum composition of all of the things that you closed upon, the things that aren't in the argument list. If it's not in the argument list and it's not a global variable, it had to come from somewhere, it comes from your closures object. So the Spiring Engineering Dev, you know, it doesn't help to be tangential to the topic. What is the objective of today's stream? Um, to, that's what the today command says, which is that I've just been learning and playing around with libraries. I know I got really far off but um, I'm playing around with WGPU, eGUI, WNIT, Fulltick, Rapier, a bunch of libraries right now and trying to integrate Fulltick with everything because um, we're missing two things. We're missing the um, redraw on a timer and I, we're missing window events connecting into eGUI. So I can't, can't click on any of these things and uh, the window doesn't update on its own. Let me show you what it looks like with W in it. That's we have full integration with W in it, so I can I can move I can interact with the with the UI. I can interact with the with the um, scene itself, and I can cause the physics engine to run. Why am I using full tick? It's just an alternative backend. I wanted to. So not only do I want to learn W 
GPU and eGUI and Rapier, I want to know how to use them in a context where, let's say I have a big program, I already, already wrote a big program in full tick, and now I want to add WGPU to it. How do I do that? Well, I would go back to this playground sandbox thing that I made and see, oh, how did I, how did I do that, right? So um, that's why it's important to me when I'm playing around with these libraries that I try to find all the ways they can fit together. So I know how to fit W init to W to GPU, but I don't know how to fit full tick to WGPU yet. My code base current active on the official site. Um, it was until I got my last, the, my current job. Then my current job, I'm not allowed to contribute to open source anymore. So my GitHub is frozen. So you could probably find my GitHub pretty easily if you did a search but it hasn't updated since I got my, my current job. I was curious, what GUI library do you recommend for design desktop apps in Rust? Um, I liked full tick, but I'm kind of biased. Um, what's the, what are the other alternatives? You go to something like, am I GUI yet? Right? Am I GUI yet? Isn't it just am I GUI? No, it's are we, not am I. Are we GUI yet? Are we GUI yet? Dot com. This one. So we go to are we GUI yet, and we um, it's basically it's what this says, right? There are some seeds planted, but you know we aren't that deep yet. So they they list all the different alternatives. So I remember going through this when I'm like, I want to make a Rust use a GUI, and what do I do it in? So some people like, um, uh, what is it, GTK? So you can do it in GTK. Uh, there's IM GUI. You can do it in QT, right? So like bindings for QT. So if you already know something like GTK, Maybe you want to look at the GTK wrapper, right? So you don't have to learn as much. Um, I picked full tick because I saw the word cross-platform and lightweight, and those really stuck with me. It's both cross-platform and lightweight. So you can make a full tick UI in Linux, and it just works on Windows, and it works on the Mac, so it's great. Um, but the, the eGUI, I guess you can call it, it's the second... UI that I'm doing in Rust now. Second UI library. So I started with full tick and then I'm like, let's do eGUI because that's like even more abstract and we could fit it on top of different other things. You like QT but doesn't really seem there yet? Yeah, like they say, like we have we have the seeds but they aren't planted deep yet. Um so maybe eventually one of these will sort of pop out as like the go-to thing that everyone uses. I think right now it sort of depends on what you like and what you're familiar with. I've heard about Druid also. Some people like Druid. Um, you do something like this if you're on um, IO, like Apple, Apple stuff, I guess. Yeah, it really depends. Iced is what you tried out? Okay. Did you like it? Tori? Is my web server using C++ Project Public? Um, the one in GitHub is, it's there. Yeah. It's not going to, I'm not going to be adding to it because I can't right now. The docs are missing a ton. I kind of feel like the same thing for full tick. Um, if I go to, like, if I wanted to figure this stuff out that I've been trying to do for the last couple hours now, and I go to full tick, it's very, like, much a C, C++ biased documentation, right? They're, they're frequently asked questions. It's a, it's a C++ GUI, right? So although it's complete and feature-rich, its API documentation is all going to be... Um, it's all going to be C++-based. Wow, and it really doesn't like the background colors I picked in this window. <laughs> I guess, can I turn off like the dark mode thing that I have picked up? Maybe I don't look at it on this web browser. Yeah, it's, I think it's the dark mode settings I have. I really should be reading this though, like in general, like how how do we set up like um, redrawing? Maybe it's under advanced. 
multi-threading, locking, no, it's not that stuff. Awake. You can send messages from worker threads to the main thread using awake. Oh, that's interesting. Uh, what's the message have in it, though? Oh. Anyway. Go back to where I was working on. Um, I have a warning here? It's warning. Oh, because I added that, right? I'm messing around and changing my code. We didn't need a self. Or is that new? What did I change in this? Oh, I changed a bunch of stuff. Oh, it was there before, but now we don't need it because I moved it out. Oh, yeah, that's genuine uh, warning. So let's remove that. So that will break something here. And then I just remove self. Cannot find function. Oh, so self colon colon. The pre function, but it's still within our class, so. Oh, well then I can move it out. This is a free function now. It doesn't have any object. I can move it completely out. Kind of crazy when players are allowed to in the U.S. Well, it's not that they're allowed to. It's what we agree with them about. So you, you're you given a job offer. It's a great job, but it has conditions. And sometimes those conditions can be kind of wacky. It's more of like the engineering firm says, you can work with us, but you have to agree to this list. And one of the things on the list is that you can't make sandcastles in public. That was a reply to your message. Okay, I'm reading chat kind of randomly. Sorry. Sir, so you are saying you no longer have an active... Depends on what you mean by active. I do have an account on GitHub. Um, but I'm... I don't... It's Right now it's immutable. It's frozen. If I were to check into it, it... I would have to get permission from my employer first. They said I could I, I could keep it up, right? It can be there. I just can't add to it anymore. So if I eventually retire, I can go back to my GitHub and start uploading again to it. That'd be fine. Okay, back to... Uh, I kind of feel like I should save this as like reference material for like in a lesson or something. You can get the handle seams just to use the botnet to, what? Someone used a botnet to subscribe you to malicious bot accounts? Can you get the handle? Don't know how GitHub would allow on the site. I'm not following you at all. Did the vape hit enter for you? Uh, I need to use the restroom and I need to pause and think about this. So I don't have a I'll be back screen. You're just going to have to watch my chair for a while. I'll be right back.
Hope you enjoyed the chair stream. Hey there, Rami. Did you? It's always someone comes during the chair stream part of the stream. This time it was Rami. You have a clause that any personal projects you make during employment is property of the company, but only if it's related to the company's business. Depends on where you live. Some jurisdictions you can challenge that. But in general, if you agree to a contract and the contract says something, then you're okay with it. And if you weren't okay with it, why did you agree? Right? Maybe you're you unable to contribute to us is similar to what your company does. Yeah, most companies just don't like conflicts of interest, right? Makes sense. You're already here, you're just lurking. You see what you unlurk during the chair stream part of the stream? <laughs> Contracts can be null and void. Yeah, if, if like you find that the contract was illegal in some way, like it violated some law in where you live. Hey there, Nightshade dude. Chair stream, best stream. So I should just leave and just watch my chair. I kind of want to know with full tick, how do you set it to just like draw automatically? Is it an event? Every time the user moves a mouse, clicks a button, presses a key, an event is generated and sent to your apps. Events can also come from other programs like Window Manager. Okay. Mouse events. Yeah, but how to like, how to... I have a feeling it's idle timeout. Or idle three, right? Which I guess I could do it that way. What would the, the idea would be that during the idle callback, if we see that the time has reached the next draw time, then we just do a redraw, right? So, like, uh, we don't need this tab. Oh, guess who's back? Come here, kitty. Say hi to the stream. So one thing I've learned about our, my, my new cat is that she likes to be pet while she's eating. So she'll come up to me, meow, and then walk back over to the uh, where she has her food, and then she's expecting to be pet at that point. Yeah, I think you're right, Ramy. Yeah. Okay, uh what tab was I on? One of these tabs is uh full tick. Move it to the end here. Oh, that far back. Okay, um it's like idle or something like that, right? Is it add idle three? Here's the thing. Calls to redraw within the callback require an explicit sleep. What does that mean? I wish I kind of knew, I wish I knew what that meant. Require an explicit sleep. What does this do? Redraws a widget necessary for resizing and changing positions. Hello, Buffer. How are you doing? Trying to understand what this means in the manual here. Sort of an odd thing to just list. Explicit sleep. Is it trying to say that if you if you don't sleep a retrial, you'll just have an infinite loop of some kind? I don't know. You can call retrial without sleeping, it'll just draw as often as possible. 
Okay. I mean, sometimes that's what you want, right? You want you want to draw and see what, like the fastest frame rate you could get. So we are going to... I'm going to not do a sleep that's going to be just looking at the time instead, right? So, yeah. So that means I don't really need... Um, I don't really need to do this anymore, right? I need that. We're just going to call it. And here we'll also call it. Actually, I think what I want, I need to um, share it between the resize. Actually, no, um, I can do what I did in W in it, right? Didn't I, um, the resize, no, the resize is just, uh, I can't remember what this was again. Does a request redraw? That's right. W init has this request redraw thing. It has a different mechanism. I think I could just ignore this redraw and have it. It'll just automatically redraw when we get to the next frame time. So then I don't even really need to redraw here at all. So what if we just do this? We just say window dot idle or is it app full tick app add idle three takes an argument what's that argument anyway it's the idle handle we don't need so if we just redraw actually this will be interesting then we'll get to see what the max frame rate is right uh, well, yes, we're going to move move it in. Okay. We'll keep that around. Let's just see how fast does it redraw now. The difference between idle, idle 2, and idle 3. I think it's the number of arguments that, sh that you're given. Let's see. Oh, they're versions. So they f the first version, I don't know, but... Uh, Version 2 just has a function that doesn't get the idle handle. I guess we could use that, right? Yeah, I, this is the third version where it gives you um, an idle handle. So if we, I could make this simpler by, uh, look at that frame rate. How come it settled back to 120? It was like really high, wasn't it, to start with? Huh, I wonder why it's exactly 120. That's like, okay, if I move the mouse, it goes higher. Is that, I wonder if that has something to do with like the virtual machine's rate. Or maybe that's one over eight milliseconds. That's just the, happens to be the fastest it can draw it. Um, I can change, if I change that to a two, I don't need this underscore, right? Oh, it wants a function. It can't be a closure anymore. It can't be an object. So we need a three because we need to move this re redraw into it. So yeah, that's important. I think I'm just, I'm inclined to just do it this way. So we move this logic in there. Right here. So I don't, so yeah, the next draw time goes to there. Um, let's move that in actually, let next. Uh, what to put here, instant now. So we get now, uh, what I want to do is I say if now is greater than or equal to next draw time, then reassign, redraw and take the next draw time. So basically um, say uh, if it's time to draw, then draw and we get the next draw time from redraw and um, then we just do that in our when we're idle. 
Here's another example of the closure here, closing on next draw time. And um, we have to move in here. If I don't move, it's going to have a problem. It's going to say that um, it, it has to take ownership of next draw time in order to do the assignment. So we have to use the move keyword. Right. If we don't use move, then it's really it's getting a borrow, and then you can't use a borrow to a, you can't assign through a borrow like that. Um, I think it's also because of the lifetime. It's basically saying that um, we're adding it to the full tick app. It might exist outside the duration of the event loop, and this is on the stack, so that's a problem. Move though says it's taking ownership of it. it gets taken off the stack and put it into the clo the the closures object. All right, so hopefully this now goes back down to 60 FPS. Wasn't it like two milliseconds, it was like 1.5, something like that, yeah. All right, cool. So this has a side effect of, um, it doesn't redraw immediately on resize, so we might have some glitches. I don't see any glitches though, seems okay. So the other problem is I can't interact with eGUI, and that has to do with the events, right? The, uh, where is it? We don't need this anymore. This one, we're not getting any events from Fulltick. You know what, I'm not using a full tick WGP, um, full tick eGUI integration. Maybe I should look and see if there is one. Oh, we're done with this tab, right? Let's reuse it. Those are like um, eGUI full tick. There is. There's two of them. Why are there two? Why is one called a front end? Would it be back end? Front end. What's front end mean? This is very confusing. I think it's probably this one that we want, right? Uh, okay. Am I already using something in cargo? Nope. Okay. So how would I use this? Opposite of backing. Yes, I know, Ramy. <laughs> Shuttles. So that's what we want, right? I'm looking for this shuttling their input in events. How is it used? New one based off of the window. And why does it need to know a max texture size? What is that? Why does that? Is that, why is that there? It doesn't make sense to me. Who cares? Take input. All oh, right, take input. You right. So I think this is the way it works, right? You you call fuse input. You give it. You you take the event and you it goes into this thing and then take inputs whenever it's asked for later. What is the purpose of preemptive moderation? You are motivating me to create a new Twitter account and never even comment, given the fact the f fact people will coax. Uh, um, you can watch, but how about you don't chat? <laughs> yeah, you can you can watch. Just your chat is very distracting. Banning them doesn't, they can still watch, right? They just can't chat. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So, um, Wave Jug, you can, you can still watch. We just don't, I don't think we need your chat. It's not really helping. Use output borrow. We use method of wrapping what eagerly emits each frame. I don't think we need that, right? Or is this thing wanting me to give it the context? Is 
this library looks kind of rough. A rough along the around the edges. Is a new band coming where watching is also restricted? Well, you can already kind of do that, right? With um, what is it? Subscriber only. Because doesn't banning someone doesn't banning a subscriber like remove their subscription or something? If it was a subscriber only stream, then okay, so it would be sort of like a subscriber only stream, but you could still watch as a non-subscriber as long as you're not banned. But then you get banned, then poof, you're out. And most you could ban the IP. And the, you can watch anonymously, can't you? You don't have to actually be logged into Twitch to watch a channel. I guess we're talking about uh, you'd have to... Anonymous connections would be disallowed, right? What, I'm, I'm thinking it's the... It, you'd have to set your channel up so that anonymous watching is uh, disabled. Um, okay. I can try this. Otherwise, I'd have to like adapt all of the all of the events, right? I'd have to do it myself. <sighs> okay, we'll try this. Zero eleven is our latest. It's called Full Ticky Gooey. Error. Version requirement of the. I need to see the full error. Wait. It has a, a underscore there. Oh, but it's a dash there. I hate it when they're inconsistent. The crate has that, but the, what the 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 module has the underscore in it, like that. Okay, whatever. The everyone else who's sane uses underscores. Why do they have to use a dash? Let me guess. I gotta make one of these things. I just look at their examples. Check the basic example. Requested resource doesn't exist. Why not? Is that because we're looking at through DockRS? So if I went back to their um, GitHub repo, probably we could see it, right? Yes. Okay. The heck is that? Take what? Huh. Come, I didn't even see that under source. Wait. Where is that coming from? <laughs> I don't get it. I don't get it. Demo. So, eagerly back in, where is that coming from? Where is that? Where is that defined? Rough around the edges just turned into hedges. I have, I'm getting like bad a bad feeling about this crate. I don't know why. What is this? Didn't need any of that junk. Oh, 
Okay, well, I'm kind of baffled. This doesn't look like it would actually compile because that, like, that isn't a module and it's not a dependency. Uh, whatever. Um, so, oh, that's how it works. Well, why did they do that? I didn't even, didn't even know you could do that. That's bizarre. And they did that one after that. Why would you do that? Why don't you just say uh, full tick e GUI import this stuff? Whatever, whatever, man. Okay, so there's a with full tick and I can give it the window. So let's start with, no, it, it's giving me the state. I have my own state though, don't I? Well, if state is the same as context, that remains to be seen. So, tab, sorry. Got lots of tabs. It's almost 10 o'clock. With tick. EGUI state. Okay, so that's not a very good name. So it's not really an EGUI state. It's a full tick EGUI state. It's using for shuttling their events, which is what we want. Okay, so then what's this painter thing then? The painter. We glow. Why did it go there? Painter, so it it's in a di completely different crate. Great, and this is why. What's glow again? Deal on whatever, which uh, I don't actually want. <laughs> this doesn't look like it's going. Yeah, this only works with the GL window. Open GL window, right? Is that how I'm already binding this thing? Let me see. Single window. Single window. It's because a uh, single window can be used. It's, it's this, right? It has a raw window handle. Yeah, so I don't think that this library is correct for me. This expects it to be an open GL window, not a not a single window, right? So this isn't gonna work for me. So what does that leave me? Just like mapping the events myself? I mean, how hard could it be, right? But let's just do it. Maybe we can cheat and look at how they did it. Uh, that would be in their uh, code, right? Let's see how they do it. So source. Um, I guess it's under lib. How much code could it be, right? Yeah, this is a bunch of stuff I don't need. New, take input, right? Use input, input to EGUI, that's what we want. Oh, this is what I want to see. So maybe we steal from here. Yeah, so it's like converting a full tick resize into um, what we need to know. Don't even need to know that. Really, I just need to know these buttons presses, right? We turn a, a full tick button press into a um, a GUI button press. What? Oh, so those are like different um, pointer IDs, I guess. Yeah, move or drag becomes an, a pointer moved, right? Okay, I think that's what I'm going to do. So we're not going to use that integration layer because it doesn't quite fit. OK. 
get to warning free here. Okay, so we're gonna have the same kind of thing, right? Um, in our integration structure here, it's owned by our main window, which runs the event loop here. So I would add the callbacks for like mouse buttons and whatnot, right? And I would then store them in here for this to take out as a raw input. So what is this raw input then? Can I just build a new one every time? Wow, clicking that caused quite a lag and it has to index something. Okay, whatever, I, I wanna into that, wrong. Why is it loading? It took a while, anyway. Um, the size that it should use? Wait, what? Why is this in raw input? Here's what I really care about, right? Events. I don't need drag and drop right now. Really need that. Oh, those are all optional? Oh, sweet. Why would I ever have something there? I don't know. <laughs> anyway, by default, it's none. So when I just make a default one when I start and then just shunt into its events, just to start with. So back here, I'd have a eGUI type let's try again raw input okay and so this one would be what um, like let input pulls self dot input dot take dot unwrap self dot input equals sum eGUI raw input default, right? Or just some defaults, default, default. Then input. Then um, we would build this based off of taking an event of some kind, right? I think you missed a dude at Kitty earlier. When writing a parser for a file, do you have a preference over how you read and then parse the data? Do you read all the data to a buffer and close the file stream or keep the file stream open and process the data? Um, the latter, usually, because the file could be huge and you might not want to allocate as much memory as the file is in size. What if, like, the file could be like gigabytes in size and it wouldn't really make sense to allocate a gigabyte of memory if you're only gonna read a small part at a time. So usually you make a trade-off um, based off of what file IO libraries you're using. It might, if it's already buffering it for you, then just keep the minimum. So let's say your parser works off of 32 bits at a time. You just read 32 bits at a time and let the file IO library buffer it for you. If you're using a very low level access, like it's actually, every time you call read, it actually blocks and reads from the file then you're going you're gonna to want to have a buffer and you probably want to set a buffer at a reasonable size um, based off of how many IOs you want over time and how much memory you're allowed to allocate. So I think if, if you don't really have any, with lack of any other constraint, I just usually pick 64 kilobytes. If you know the files are max one megabyte, well, so then the question is, are you, do you have budget for holding a meg megabyte in memory at once? If so, then yes, yeah, simplify the process, read it all into memory and drop the file handle. Sure, that's, that, that's fine, but realize it's an optimization. If your constraints change in the future, you might find yourself having to redo parts of the code. 
you want to keep it flexible you might keep the file handle in there but have a memory buffer with it and then when the buffer gets to the end you can then try to read more from the file and maybe in practice you only do one read at the very beginning right you can have both huh. yeah but i usually like have like a i don't know some small but arbitrary sized buffer um because it doesn't hurt and I keep the file handles because I don't usually have those max file max size max file size um, constants, right? And that got missed because of my kitty. I'm looking back to see when that happened. That was a while ago, huh? Sorry about that. I don't even see it in my buffer. My buffer on Twitch is too short. Oh, now I see it. What else did I miss there? Of course, close the stream once it's read and processed. Yeah. Yep, we can blame the kitty. <laughs> right now you open a file stream and a binary reader and because you know the data type you want to read, just read n amount of bytes at a time. I mean, Keep it simple sometimes is better, right? Okay. Going to want an input. Defaults. Default, default. Oh, uh, shoot, that should be some. Input is mutable? Immutable? Oh, it wants me to use interior mutability. Do I need it to be interior mutability? That's the trait I defined. It's my own fault, right? Can I make that mutable? Fix it in W in it. Yeah, okay. Then that's that solves it without needing it to be have interior mutability. Actually, I'm wondering if, is that why I had this state inside a ref cell to begin with? Or was that for a different reason? That state's probably used a lot, right? That's because feed input event also is immutable. Just thinking I can get rid of a ref cell if I can make that mute, right? Can I? Can I, can I, can I? Um, oh, I have an error. That's why. It has to, yeah, it has to be interior. We have to ref sell it. Okay, no big D, no biggie. We can do it. So I have an inner here. Um, I had to do the same thing here, right? Well, I did it with that. Suppose I can do the same thing. Yeah, because they have an integration. Okay, so we'll just have an inner. Put that there. Have an inner.
One megabyte can probably be read into a buffer these days, yeah. Back in my day, you needed several floppy disks to get to megabyte. Okay, so then this would be let inner equals self dot borrow mute dot. And then one's inner. Wait, what? Not a method. Not a method. Why does it think it's a method? Oh, because it is a method. Ah, uh, shoot. So, hold on. This. Wait, what? Oh, uh, this is, that's why it's the inner dot. Now to um, actually put the events in. So it will be similar to this, right? It's going to be a, whoa, that happened. Too many files open, too many tabs. Going to be similar to this, I think, where um, this event loop window event, right? It actually went to the integration and did the feed which had to go into the inner as well and do on event. So why don't I just follow the same pattern here? Oops, this one, paste. Okay, and the oh, it, it doesn't actually work the same way, does it? Ah, uh, shoot. Cheat and look at what they did. Okay, they do have it. It's just called an enums event. So it would be a full tick enums event. really an i32 wait where's the body of it then oh you have to go to the app and ask it okay fine so it's a copy we don't need that all right and then what's this event response How did we use that? Zoomed. Hmm. Probably don't need that, right? So here, what did I do? I, th I think it's different. I don't think I actually need to return anything. I'll use state instead of inner here. Maybe that should be state. What are this state thing? Oh, right. Because the integration layer did it for me. Okay, never mind. So then, um, need a context? I do, right? Uh, yeah, because I need to ask it, right? I need to um I need to run it by the the eGUI. They probably need to do it too here, right? Oh no, they don't. It's just yeah, okay. We don't actually have a context thingy. How did they why did they need it? 
context. What did they use the context for? Once pointer input. Oh, I don't think I need that though. Oh, wait, wait, maybe I do because we don't, yeah, we'll have the problem of the input events going to two different things, right? Well, I'll, get, I'll cross that bridge when I get there. Keep it simple for now. So there is no context, just the event. There is no return value. There's no event response. We just feed the event in. So we have an on event done here. Uh, where, 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 where? I guess that would be, I'm in the wrong spot. I'm totally changing the wrong code here. Need to be here. Looks similar, but it's not the same. Get rid of that. No event response. Cool. Okay, on event. That's this inner, right? Function on event. One of these guys, and we're going to match this guy just like they did in their integration layer. Um, what the heck? Can't I do a why does it want to add this function's return type? It's not a function. I thought I would be able to fill the arms with... Is it because it's inside of a macro? It's an enum, but I think the problem is it's defined inside of macro. Oh, it's not an enum. Hub struct that looks like an i32. Oh, it's not an enum. Oh, <laughs> kill me now. <laughs> it's a bit set. That's because, yeah, they want to be able to say um, event push, right? So, like, this. Ugly. Okay, what events do I care about? Push release, enter leave, I guess. Push release, enter leave. Else released. Uh, do I care about drag? I guess drag and move are the same thing. Now let's see what they do. Treat move and drag is yeah, they treat move and drag is the same thing. So I'll do the, I'll do similar. Move, drag, same. Focus on focus key down. I don't really care about, actually I do care about these things, right? Oh, that's gonna be the messy part. We gotta translate key presses. We can do it. Key up, key down. Why do all programming streamers use exclusively fad languages and not stable ones? Um, that sounds like an inflammatory question. Very broad and very... Um, tuned to try to get a reaction from me, right? 
Raimi responds with, I don't know. Do you feel like putting on a dress wig and makeup sometimes? If so, you might care about drag. Oh, that, you're not answering Codeplex. You're answering, uh, do I care about drag? <laughs> yeah, Codeplex. Um, are you just trying to get a reaction out of people here? Do you think I need some ibuprofen? Goodbye. We're just going to move on. Haven't seen me stream in ages, and I can also see Raimi hasn't changed a bit. <laughs> well, Ra Raimi is the artist. You see that nice little icon next to his name? He's the artist. Artists are allowed to have peculiarities, right? Close. What's close going to do? Close? I don't know. Move? Don't think we need any of these. Need mouse wheel. Well, they they're asking for it. Spoof. I just don't have the tolerance for someone who's obviously trolling. I never have. It's I have I have some impulsive tendencies and one of them is like when I have when there are like general rules of um etiquette on platforms like Twitch, like trolling is bad etiquette. And if someone just like comes in and starts trolling, like I just have no patience for it, I guess. Some streams they try to to talk to trolls and like to get them to see what they're coming from. But it's like if someone came into the chat and said, why do you beat your wife? I'm like, D does that, does, does that like, what's the point? Right. Just trying to get a, just trying to get a reaction. Right. You know, if you mix aluminum foil with iron rust, it burns like at 5k. Are you sure about that? That's Let's cook. <laughs> Aluminum foil and iron rust? You mean like if you burn it? Huh. Okay. <laughs> I'm not known to, as a chemist. I'm not the chemist. I'm the programmer. Okay, so... Um, back. Let's just start with these because... Really, the important ones are move and drag and enter and leave. Actually, these, these aren't even really that important, are they? They might be. It might not react to the UI at all unless we get an enter first. Uh, push is important, and then these to a lesser extent. Let me do the ones that matter most to me right now. So that would be, um, I guess, move and push. So move, right? Just copy what they did. Why not? Oh -ha. Do I care about pixels per point? I don't know. Uh, we want the full tick app event coordinates. Position uh, two. A hey, we're ultimately going to um, get to our inner so let inner equal self inner borrow oh we're already in inner never mind it's just going to be self dot events push right self dot events dot as ref well let's get this out so we're going to use this a lot right set events equal um, self dot events dot as mute unwrap input that's input not events right because it's it's just going to be input dot events right and this pointer position do they saved it for some reason let's just get it for now
why don't I just put it in there then? And I don't know what that is for now. We'll just make make it one. Position two. It depends on the type of this. So it's a e GUI pause two. Um, what's wrong here? Oh, break, brace. One dot. Cool. <laughs> I'm just reading what you just said. You stumble on it by accident. Rusty hobby projects to start burning holes into everything. <laughs> Okay, so the push, right? This is probably where they needed the pointer of position, I'm guessing, right? Yeah, so we need to say where you press the button. Yeah, so let's just copy. I already know what I'm going to be doing here. Uh, maybe I just should import full tick at this point. That. So I'm going to do the same kind of mapping they do. Uh, this is a roundabout way to do things, isn't it? Why don't we just return here? Remove all the sums. I can't return there. Uh, can. And uh, I don't need this if let. And mouse button becomes a pressed. It's just pressed. Get rid of that. Get rid of that. Need another parentheses. Good. OK, so it's not stay. It's just input. Um, can I just say none for the modifiers? Modifiers. Oh, I have to have some empty structure or something. Uh, yeah, let's just have an empty modifiers. I have like, they have the default. Okay, so default. Yeah, so I do I do need to re re retain the pointer position. That was a e GUI position two, right? Okay. So. That's this um, position. So we're going to push it in. We're also going to retain a copy of it. But not letting me. Um, oh, because input is not input, it's self dot. Equals some pointer position. So we have we can only do this if we have a pointer position, right? If let some pointer position full self dot pointer position. 
if we get a push and we don't know what position it is, we don't know what to tell the input system, so we'll just ignore the event. So that's just that. Okay, copy it. Well, if we're going to copy it, then I can copy it up here. There we go. Did I just hit some keys to come up with that name? No, it's a C++ library. Yeah. It's pronounced full tick. I don't know if it stands for full tick. The fast light toolkit. I should probably zoom in on this. There we go. Oh, that's fine. Yeah, the reason why I kind of gravitated towards this with Rust is that um, it's cross-platform. If there was a cross-platform full service toolkit for Rust, I would have picked that. But the next best thing was the C++ toolkit with a Rust binding. So um, I found this through um, the Are We GUI Yet page, which I don't think I, I left that open, did I? Yeah, I don't know what tab I was on, but if you go to arewegooeyet.com, um, I was looking at what GUIs I could use from Rust, and um, I think I got to where it said here, and it says uh, it's a cross-platform lightweight GUI li library, and I'm like, sweet, count me in. Uh, whereas like stuff like GTK and QT are more, more heavyweight. All right. So that'll get push. Is release the same as push? So in that case, like, where's the tab? It's on. It is. Release is sort of the same. I wonder if I could, um, I could probably refactor that out, right? Yeah, why do they have Actually, I don't even need to refactor it. Why can't I just have this be um, them with the same handler? So, like, it could be push and release, push or release, and put something in front, like uh, event. Actually, uh, can I use event inside of here? I can just say rest is event equals. Then remove that. Okay, I got myself some errors though. I am indeed missing inner. Because I moved that in here, right? Inner ref cell new inner like that. Pointer position, none. Okay. Thoughts on IAM GUI? I don't really know it, but I've heard that eGUI, which I'm using, is like IAM GUI. It's inspired by it. It's been a while since I ran this, right? Can I run it again? This is what I'm playing with. Um, different libraries to do physics, graphics, user interface. It has to be hosted inside of a window to interact with the window manager and all that good stuff. So I had gotten this running with W in it and then other two other backends that one that I had picked and one that chat had picked are full tick and SDL2. So I'm working on um, getting the backend for full tick up to speed. But yeah, ultimately in the main here, we can pick from W init full tick or SDL2 um, using a Concrete type chosen at runtime. As long as it obeys this abstract window contract. And part of that is getting um, eGUI integration. And part of that is accept or, or producing eGUI raw input, which is what we need to get everything connected. And that's what I'm working on right now. Steel 2 is so bloated. Someone asked for it though. All we need is the window interface. Minecraft with physics. 
Uh, it's just that I borrowed the Minecraft uh, textures. It was, it was it was more interesting than having just random rainbow colors. I should just see what I get with I, when I run this, right? I get a lot of warnings about things not being used, but that's okay. So now Igu should be getting mouse movements. But they're being ignored or something. I should probably do a debug when we actually get them, right? So, oh, we're never calling it. Never used. We need to use it. Right, right, right. Uh, where do we use them? Here somewhere? Somewhere they've got to attach handlers, right? Use input. Hmm, so it really, it kind of goes back to uh, what they do in the example, right? Oh, they just have win handle. Okay. Uh, and they're only passing some of them, so we don't, this is sort of redundant, isn't it? Can I just do win handle and then like pass it the, yeah, the window in the event? Yeah, why can't I just do that? It would be um, window dot handle the event well, I'm gonna guess it's win it's window which we don't need and it's event not as a tuple right and it would be um. Move. I need to, okay, rather than figure this out, I'm going to see what I did for W init. Um, at that point, Handle event. Wait. Same thing here? No, I need to get to my own um, EGUI integration. How did this, how did I do it with W init? I did it like that. But I did, in fact, I did both of those so I could see the events. So let's see it there. Um, that would go here. Okay, but the problem is I can't move self in there. So what am I going to do here? Put the, oh, it's, I already have it RC'd. Good, great. So I can grab one, right? So I can say, um, let the GUI integration equal that self dot that dot clone. Remove the self off of there. Close that. This needs a bool. This does it return? Oh, whether it's handled or not? I mean, can I just say it's always handled? Say true. True. 
That doesn't need to be borrowed because it's copy. There is no response. All right, cool. So now it should handle it. Hoping to get to a minimum where this reacts to... Oh, there we go. So, okay, got it. We got it. Hopefully that's all I need to do. I can... Re oh, let's see if the keyboard input works. One, five. No, the key, I didn't do the key down, so I, when I'm hitting typing numbers here, it doesn't change anything there. So I, I need to do the keys then, right? For the keyboard input to work. Everything else works, though. Woo! Keyboard input. How hard is it? Let's see. That's the example. I need to go back into their library. It's sort of cheating by looking at this implementation, but this implementation is just too like tightly wrapped around OpenGL. Uh, here we go. So where is it? Key up, key down, right? Compose. Event text, characters, next, compose it. Okay, so this is if what you hit turns into actual text and it's a text event. In addition, there's a translate virtual key code. And then we have, I'm not, I'm not going to care about the modifiers. Right? So we end up just, I mean, don't, I don't care about copy paste right now. Um, I'm just going to end up pushing a key event that I um, translate. So I don't need enter or leave, I don't think. I don't think I need those. Still need to do mouse wheel also. Okay, so these are combined, right? So we eventually will do that. We need the key though, and the modifiers so we're not gonna worry about. I gotta translate the key. I know Musin. Yeah, I know he does crazy things. It, he is uh, a very good Rust programmer, like very adept at it. And he's actually come into this stream a bunch and given me advice. And um, I try to watch his streams, although it's difficult for me because it's hard to interact with him. Um, but I learned a thing or two. Yeah, he is a wizard, yeah. There are just some people who like have this like, deep knowledge of certain subjects, and you have to admire that, right? Does he deserve a shout out if, you're, if I'm not streaming? And check him out. We also have this slash shout out. This works too, right? Or is it shout out? I have to type the whole word. There. Now I've given a shout out and also stream elements have shouted him out. It's been a few days, but he streams all the time, right? So he, maybe he's busy for some reason. I'm sure he's not gone for long. Just have a chat text and run command there done? What? <laughs> okay, I missed a bunch of chat. No videos found. Does he not save his own VODs? His streams are not something that are great for watching on a VOD. It Because he doesn't talk, right? You just have to watch him type and then maybe interact with him. <laughs> He's VODing on YouTube? I've never seen him on YouTube. So he's pretty private. You never... You never see him, you never hear him. Don't even know if if Musin is a him. So he is the mystery or they are the mystery that is Musin. Okay, so this translate key, I wonder where that oh here it is. 
I'm just going to cheat and copy the whole damn thing from them, because why not? Here we have a nice uh, key translator. I think I just caused there to be a full tick, full tick. We'll have to fix that. Okay, so translate virtual key code. There is no key. Uh, we need to get the key. Where's the key? Key, 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 key. Oh, it's app event key. We'll tick app event key. So that gets keys, but not text, right? So they had another section where they kind of grab, let's just do, let's just do what they did. If some character is, and here we'll do a full tick app, then, um, it's input events push some text. So we'll just trust that they've they've developed that and it just works. Uh oh. That shouldn't have been there. Four errors. I screwed something else up. What did I do? Oh text. Ambiguous type. E GUI event, right? Now it's not ambiguous anymore. This is E GUI event text. Found an option. So it might not get translated. Ah, let's, um, okay. Yeah. All right. Fair enough. If let some key equal this. Brace and bracket. All right, let's try it. Musen lives in the shadows. Yeah, sometimes Musen, who might be lurking this channel, like we don't we don't know until Musen starts chatting, does live in the shadows. With much power comes with much responsibility. So one of the favorite things about Musen that I liked was, I think it was like a year and a half ago for Advent of Code. They took on the challenge of solving puzzles by never using a semicolon. And it had to be 100% Rust, no semicolons. Which is possible, it's just everything has to be an expression. And um, we have some code that looks like that, right? Um, where was it? Where we have uh, dot, dot lists. Or I don't know what to call them. Like this, right? There's no semicolons here, right? It'd just be code that is, it looks entirely like this, where it's just chained expression. That's what it was, chained expressions, where everything was a chained expression. Um, you could have functions, but without semicolons, that means you, all functions were only one expression long. It's just the expressions were huge chains. I thought that was really, really, really impressive. <laughs> yeah. And he talked, you could ask him about it. He, he talked about how like some things like, you had to go through were like extravagant like um, workarounds to get rid of just s trivial semicolons. Like you had to add constructs in the code. Oh, my clicking and dragging in the world is broken. I think because what's happening is uh, the click is never being passed on outside the callback. Yeah, okay. So then that's where that um, is window focused or whatever, or is it window accepting input? That's where that matters, right? 
Oh, but I wanted to make sure this. Oh, when I hit, it's double hitting. I think I know why. Uh, in the, it's handling the up and the down at the same time, right? Yeah, up and down, it's doing that. I think we only want to do that on down, right? Yeah, only on key down do they do that. What do they do on key up? Do they even handle key up? They do handle key up. So they translate a key up as a... Uh... Oh, no, they don't. So I I could just ignore the key up then. That's simple. Only do a key down. Probably good enough. Okay, so I also need to do mouse wheel. We're not doing that. If 150 backspace also isn't working. Why would backspace not work? Backspace didn't work. Oh. Wait. Why is it doing that? That's the odd way to do things. Okay. Anyway, um, there is a mapping from backspace to backspace. I wonder why it's not working. Could it be that we need that for key up? No, that's only, f they only have that for like control V or command V. Weird. Oh, I didn't translate the pressed, did I? Oh, I have a false. That should be true. Maybe that's what it was. Guessing that's what it was, so this should work, right? Oh, the key repeat also probably isn't working. Yeah, backspace is working now. Yeah, key repeat's broken, but do I really care? Oh, no, now it's working. So key repeat works even without me ever setting it. Interesting. Okay. So what do they they always set it? They always set it to false too. Okay. How hard is mouse wheel? Control. I don't care about control. It's a up. I don't care about scroll factor either, right? I don't know what scroll factor is. Well, that's cool. I didn't know you could do that in GitHub. If you click it, it actually shows it as a symbol reference. Well, I wonder what that means. Maybe, so I might have to have some scaling factor in here. Oh, let's just let's just try out what they have. Do it. Got to go. See ya, Betseg. Thanks for being here. I'm just going to cheat and put the number 12 in there that they had before. I got to get my imports consistent. Uh, let's just see what this does. So the mouse wheel controls the field of view right now. Almost 11. I should probably end the stream soon. I've been going for a while. Almost four hours. Well, it's broken. Not getting any mouse wheels.
It's not working. I don't know if that has to do with it being dy, not dx. I um make that x. No, because I think I am handling y events, right? Where do we, where do we handle that? Oh, but it doesn't go to igui. Yeah, igui doesn't need mouse wheel. Right, right, right. The real problem is, yeah, I don't need to do mouse wheel because Egui doesn't. There's nothing in Egui that use, that I care about using mouse wheel for. Problem is that it gets the event gets eaten all the time, right? Where was it? It was on the handle, right? What if I set that to false? What happens then? Does that mean it gets passed through to other things? Oh, I know what it is. <laughs> um, in W init, I actually have um. This thing here, right? I don't have the equivalent of that here. Um, yeah, so in addition to feeding the ego integration, we also want to handle um, certain events ourselves, right? When I hand handle these events. But these really, they didn't, they're not W init specific. I ought to move, I ought to move these up, shouldn't I? Yeah, like the fact that we're dragging all this stuff. These are independent of the back end. These don't really go here. Okay, so that let's make that a task for tomorrow. Because I kind of want to end the stream soon. So I need to put a note for myself where I left off. Which is, I guess, here. Oh, you know what? I have two window handles. Should probably fix that, right? That window handle and this window handle probably should go together. Two things. Uh, to do. May probably move this up to uh, full tick window new. to do down here also need to translate um non egui house gestures and send to the app. Which means that I have another to do back in WNIT and that these should be sent to the app in the first place. So where do I say that? Probably here. Yeah, th all of this right here, so to do. Move the handling of these events to the app. Okay, so I'll, I'll work on that tomorrow, but yeah, I'm getting tired. About that time anyway, I usually don't stream this late. I can only stream this late today because it's a holiday for me. But um, yeah, I get kind of tired after four hours. So we're going to have to, we're going to have to wait until tomorrow to work anymore on this. You too, tired beaver. I'm a tired Ramu. Oh, Primogen is talking about Rust drama. Anthony writes code is terraforming the serverless Discord bot. 
Soding is recording sounds from your microphone. Ooh, okay. Ah, uh, I don't know. I've been raided by Lloyd. Lloyd, I have to raid someone else myself. I'm I'm four hours in. I'm really tired. But thanks for the raid. Before I go, let me um, show you guys what I've been working on. I'll just run the release build without the full tick stuff because then I get the full user interface. I'm working on integrating different libraries together in Rust. So there's physics, there's 3D graphics, there's user interface stuff. So I can slide this slider or this one to move the camera, or I can just click and drag in the field itself. Um, individual th cubes here have uh, rigid body mechanics, like with a physics engine. And the whole thing is on in the window, which can have uh, different libraries for um, hosting the window. And mostly today, in the last hour, couple hours, I was working on uh, alternatives to W in it, so full tick and SDL too, and um, connecting those in. But I'll be back tomorrow to doing to be doing more of this. There's not really much more point of this besides learning these libraries and learning how to fit them together so that in the future if I make projects based off of any of these libraries I kind of know how to work with them so those uh, libraries uh, the today command talks about is WGPU, eGUI, and Rapier got no positives from your command line idea I guess GUI it is oh Tinspin you're talking about uh, something else okay all right great gotta go let me set this up Hope you guys enjoy the primogen. I'm going to take it easy, enjoy the rest of my holiday, and see you guys tomorrow, okay? Rating in five, four, three, two. We'll see you guys. Bye bye, bye.